and hello everyone welcome back to a new video so i'm going to show you how you can kind of convert your flask app into a desktop application with flask web gui now take note flask web gui is kind of just using chrome in the back end to create a little application window so you do need chrome or chromium installed but anyways if you do have that installed then uh, just to show you that this actually is a website not just some crap uh, I'm going to just use my run command which I'm going to show you in a second because that will become uh, something important later so if we go to the local host then we just wait for it to start up there we go so here's the website in fact you can actually visit it either on the real actual website if you wanted to uh, but it will probably by the time the video comes out this will probably be down but anyway so here it is now basically i want to create an app for this you know i want to make it into an app so people can still use it so to do that it's a little bit difficult because if i show you my run folder so cat uh, run this age right here or actually i think i have it open here yeah there we go so it exports flask app and it exports Flask environment and then runs Flask. Now this is usually how I make my Flask apps. You know, it has this run file and I just use that to run it. Problem is, problem is, that I usually do this because if you upload your Flask app to an actual website, there's a lot of changes you have to make. And by doing this, I don't have to make those changes because if I go to my init file, then as you can see, there isn't the if main underscore if name underscore main or anything like that anymore because that is handled with that file but problem is these don't quite work as well and with this flask web GUI you have to run it from a main file you can't just say flask run which is usually what I do here you can't you can't do that so uh, also if you don't have this installed it is you just pip install it so uh, pip install Flask web GUI or whatnot, something like that. I'm not going to go through installing it, but I'm going to show you how to create, make it run. So, just to show you an example, let's uncomment this. So, there's three lines of code you need. You need this, you need to import it, and then you need to create a UI with it. And then, once you have created the UI, we can actually just do this. And then you can go ui.run and this will allow us to the testing v don't worry about this testing v is just me if this is a test environment it should use things like an sql light database instead of the actual database itself so don't worry about that here though then you just set a secret key that's not even necessary because we already have a secret key and then here the ui.run is what makes it run problem is Problem is, if we go here and we say, let me just stop this from running, go into the folder, here's the files. If I want to run, if I want to run init.py, so I have to go python3 and then init.py. It's going to run it, but it's going to be like, hey, how do I import this? Because if you go here, then with Flask, you kind of have to say dot and then what you want to import and then db. But since we're using Flask Web GUI, we have to transform it into a Python way, and not a Flask Web, but a Python way. So here's a piece of code that you can also just copy and paste. I have actually no idea what it really does, but it allows us to kind of index this folders and stuff right here. So if I go back here, and I alias right here again, as you can see, there's my databases folder. If the alias was this out of databases, there's my db.py and now we can just remove these dots in front of and then if we run it we're still going to get an error we're still going to get an error but the error would have shifted to a different file now it says instead of admin we can't find dot dot auxiliary right here the problem is admin is in a different folder it is in a completely different folder so if I go here then it's right inside of roots and it's trying to access auxiliary.py right here the file alice was inside of routes then as you can see there is my admin.py how do i make it access it from outside well we just paste that code there again remove those dots 
And now, if we were to run this file, then the error would have shifted. So now it is no longer in the admin.py folder, it is inside of torrent folder, so right here. So we can just do that again. Do that. Remove these dots. Okay, we can do the same for users so we don't get an error here as well. Let's remove these dots. Add that OS. Go here to root. Remove these dots. And add that line of code. Now if you run it, we won't get any errors and we will actually get an application to pop up. And that is exactly what I want to. Take note, it's still going to run on a server because it does still use Chrome in the background. It's just a web browser really stripped down into an application-like thing. So right here, there is the title of the application. And as you can see, it, this pops up on its own, you know. But this is Chrome. Take note, this is still Chrome. And yeah, there you go. We can even resize the window if we want. We can also tell what size the window should be and all of those cool things. And everything still works. If I want to sign in, I can just say login and boom, I have logged in. Now I even have more options to choose from. And yeah, so th that's kind of how you make an application. If you also struggle with kind of making paths work and stuff like that, that was how to fix it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching and see you all again in the next video.